Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the Pilates for Beginners series. In today's video, you'll get a full body, low to no impact workout. All you need is a mat and some space. Let's get started. Please join me in a standing position to start with our warm-up. Feet hip width apart, arms by the sides of the body, and we're just going to begin by bouncing on the spot, keeping the knees super soft, feet flat on the floor, shoulders completely relaxed, and the arms free of tension as well. So go ahead and bounce here, keep your eyes open, and really important to breathe through this. So take a deep breath in, Exhale out completely. Really good. Breathe. And once you've got this rhythm, go ahead and keep your eyes open and then tilt your head to the right, ear to shoulder. Come back to center, ear to shoulder on the other side. And back to center. Let's do this one more time each side. This is great to stimulate the vestibular system that lives deep within our ears. Good. Center. And last one on this side. And center. Really good. And release. Shake out those legs. Shake out those arms, shoulders. Letting go of any tension. Loosening up everything. Very nice. And come back to your standing position now. We're going to begin with some shoulder rolls now. So keep your feet hip width apart. We don't want to lock any of our joints. So keep your knees soft and go ahead and circle through the shoulders. My chest stays facing towards the, ground, uh, towards the front. Sorry, Just the shoulders roll. And breathe through it. Really important. Breathe and breathe. One more and then you reverse. Let's go. Reverse. Reverse. Breathe here. <sighs> Good. Notice how your shoulders feel. Keep your awareness on the body, in the breath, in the present. Very nice. And release. Now we're going to involve our chest a little bit, getting in a bit of rotation in the spine. Reach your right arm up, turn the chest towards the right. And other side. Good. Keep going with this and have fun with this. Think of it as a little dance. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Notice how my hips are moving as well here. My knees are soft. And when you're ready, reverse. And go. Breathe. Notice how your shoulders feel. Notice how your spine feels. Loosening up the sides of the spine here. Loosening up the shoulders. Good. The upper back. Nice. And release. Once again, shake it out if you need to. Let's move on to our hips now. Hands on the hips. Big circles. Three in one direction. And then we reverse. Two. And three, reverse, one, two, and three. Very good. Let's move on to the knees. Feet come in together, hands on the knees, bend your knees, and you're going to imagine you have two eyes on the kneecaps that want to scan the whole room. So big circle with the knees. Make this more about the knees, less about the hips. It's big circle. And let's reverse. It's really important to lubricate these joints, to warm them up for all the exercises that, that are to come, especially because we have squats coming up. Good. And come back to center. Release. Shake out those legs if you need to. Moving on to the ankles now. Now keep your feet hip width apart. Peel the right heel off the floor and immediately notice what your left hip did. Did it collapse? Did it shift? If it did, push it back in, lengthen up through the spine. Think of a thread pulling the crown of the head up. Good. Once you've got this, go ahead and circle through the ankles. Keep the ball of the foot down and imagine you have a pencil from the heel drawing down circles on the mat. Go ahead and reverse the circle. Think of it as a nice little massage for the ball of the foot. We tend to forget about our ankles and our feet, but it's really, really necessary to give them some attention, warm them up. 
so that we don't facilitate any injury. Let's do that on the other side. Once again, push your hip in. If you're collapsing into that standing leg here, lengthen up through the spine and go ahead and draw those circles. Keep the ball of the foot down. Think of massaging the ball of the foot. Made it, make it more about the ankle, less about the knee. And I say this because immediately I feel that this side for me is a little more challenging. My knee tends to move more than my ankle. So notice if it is this side for you that is more challenging without any judgment. We're just learning more. Reverse the circle. We're just learning more about our own body. And that is what helps us to reduce injuries, to make ourselves stronger, more aware. Good. And go ahead and release. Now we're going to mobilize our upper spine, the thoracic spine. Okay. We're going to reach our right arm to the side, flip the palm up, reach the left arm to the side, keep the palm facing down. And now we're going to imagine that you have a plate on your right hand that you want to pass on to someone on the side without moving your hips. So go ahead and pass <laughs> and come back to center. So think of your ribs gliding to the side, coming back to center. Side, center. Reach, center. Notice if your shoulders have lifted, draw them down. <sighs> and this is really good to mobilize the upper spine. Our upper spine, the thoracic spine, tends to be stiffer than the lumbar spine, the lower spine. So it's really good to do this kind of mobilization. Good. Relax. Release. Let's do the same on the other side. Stretch your left arm out to the side, palm facing up, right arm out, and palm facing down. Good. Keep your knees soft. Reach and center. Reach and center. Feel the ribcage sliding and coming back. Slide and come back. Breathe. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> Good. Two more. Last one, really good, and release, breathe, shake it out. Now we're going to start with our exercises. The first one is going to be our squat, just a normal squat with our feet hip width apart. Now, although the squats work our legs a lot, our glutes a lot, it's a great exercise to engage the abdominals. How do we do this? It's not only about sucking everything in to keep this engaged. Okay, you want to think of a corset pulling everything in towards the center and back. So think of the ribs drawing in, <sighs> belly button drawing in towards the spine, <sighs> and the hip bones coming in towards the center and lifting. Okay, imagine that corset nice and strong. So you're going to keep this engagement in your abs while you squat. Okay, reach your arms up, shoulder level. Feet hip width apart. Let's get down into that squat. Shoulders away from the ears. R uh, ribs in. Abs nice and engaged. Neck long. So I'm not here. Neck long and up. Squeeze those glutes as you lift. Abs tight. Let's go. Go only as low as you feel comfortable in the knees. You don't have to push yourself too hard. Every repetition you do, you're getting stronger. <sighs> Every practice gets you stronger. <sighs> Good. I'm going to add in a little bit of arm movements here. So with your next squat, inhale, arms forward. On the exhale, flip the palms towards the back wall and press the palms towards the back wall, getting in a bit of engagement between the shoulder blades. Inhale, exhale. <sighs> Remember to keep those abs engaged. If you don't engage them, this might happen. The lower back is going to take in more pressure. So tuck the tailbone slightly, draw the belly button in. Keep going. And breathe. <sighs> Can you do two more? And after this one, hold it down in the squat with me. Can you hold it here? <sighs> and the little pulses, small little movements and breathe. We're not going to stay here too long, I promise. Keep your abs tight for three, for two, for one. You've got this. And release. Good. Shake it out. Really, really good. Shake it out. Oh, good job. Notice how much engagement that was in the abs, although you were working your legs more. Amazing. Good. One more for our legs here. 
This one's great to shape up the legs, to get, get the glutes to work, to get the hamstrings to work, and to keep engagement in the core. Reach your left foot forward, right foot back. Again, really important to draw the ribs in, belly button in, and keep the spine nice and long. Now shift your weight onto this left foot, okay? And this is where your weight will stay throughout this exercise. Reach your arms forward. Once you've got this position, Tap the right foot forward, tap it back. Notice how my left knee is bent. That will help you feel the burn in that left glute. Okay, keep going here. Again, keep your neck long, no tension in the shoulders. <sighs> Abs nice and engaged. <sighs> Reach and tap. I'm not shifting my weight forward and back. My weight stays on this foot here and here. Breathe. <sighs> Stay with me. Let's do three and two and one. Very good. Release. <laughs> Very good. Shake it out. Let's do the same on the other side. This time my right foot is forward. Left foot back. Get into position. Spread awareness in your body, in your toes, in your feet, in the thighs, abs, neck, shoulders. Once you're in your starting position, go ahead, shift your weight onto the right foot. And let's go. Tap and back. Tap and back. It's not about speed. It's not about momentum. Okay? Two of the principles of Pilates are precision and control. So can you make this movement nice and controlled and precise? <sighs> Keep breathing through it. <sighs> Abs in. <sighs> really good. Three more. Two more. <sighs> Keep those taps really light. Nice job. And release. <laughs> good job. Shake out those legs. Good. Now that we've worked on our legs, We'll work on the rest of the posterior chain muscles a little bit. So please join me in a tabletop position on your mat. And first things first, we're going to get our abs engaged and do a little scapular push-up. So what I mean by that, bring your wrists under the shoulders. Now notice if you're collapsing your chest like this. Push away from the ground and think of lifting your ribs towards the ceiling. That will immediately get you to engage those back muscles. Once you're here, think of pushing the ground away from you a little further. Okay, knees are under the hip points. Now draw the ribs in, belly button in, hip points in together. Now you've got your abs nice and tight. Once you have this, can you send your left foot back, right arm forward. Now can you keep the rest of the body nice and engaged here and breathe. Neck is long, I'm not dropping my head. Neither am I looking up. Crown of the head forward. Push the ground through the left hand. If this is enough for you, please stay here. If you want a little more challenge, lift the foot, lift the hand. And tap both down and up. <sighs> Breathe. Keep your core tight the whole time. You don't have to do this movement. Maybe you can just do the arm. Maybe you can just do the leg. You pick your level, <sighs> breathe through it. <sighs> Good, let's do three more. Can you lift the, the ribs? Remember, you don't wanna open your hips like this. It's not about lifting high. It's small movement, but nice and controlled. Last one. Really good. Release, take a little child's pose stretch here, getting your knees together, relax your head. Relax your shoulders. Breathe here. Take as much time as you need to here. Always feel free to hit pause whenever you need a longer break. And then when you're ready, please join me back for the other side. <laughs> so let's get into tabletop position. Get ourselves position for this exercise. So draw the ribs in, belly button in, neck in alignment. And when we're ready, we're going to add one more piece of visualization here. Imagine you have a, a tea cup on your lower back that you do not want to spill. That will help you keep your hip bones facing the ground. So extend your right leg this time. Is the cup of tea nice and stable still? Reach your left arm. 
Oh, maybe they stay on the floor. If you're ready, you lift. You tap, you lift. Remember, it's not about height. Keep length, reach your fingertips, reach your heel or your toes. <sighs> Abs nice and tight. <sighs> Great exercise to strengthen all the posterior chain muscles from the back right down to the calves. <sighs> Breathe. Keep your abs engaged, ribs lifted. Last one here. And release, very good. If you need to, shake out your hands, shake out your shoulders a little bit. <sighs> very nice. And we're going to finish off lying down on the back. We'll do a couple of ab exercises and then one for our inner thighs. So please join me in a supine position. Lie down on your back. Nice and easy. Good. From here, first things first, you're going to create some space in your spine. So bring your hands behind your back and take a moment to shuffle your shoulder blades up, <sighs> creating space in the spine. Very nice. Now from here, you're going to take a moment first to take a big breath in. <sighs> Feel your rib cage fill up. Feel that little space under the lower back. That's your natural lumbar spine curve. Now on the exhale, you want to draw the ribs in as if you had a heavy break on your ribs. Belly button in. And think of your hip bones coming in towards the center. So the lower back comes a little closer to the ground. You're engaging your abs without engaging your glutes. So I don't want you to squeeze your glutes here. Make it more about your abs. Okay, once you've got this engagement, keep your arms relaxed by the sides, shoulders relaxed, lift your left foot off the floor. Now you have a 90 degree angle at the knee and at the hip. This angle is going to stay the same throughout. You're going to dip the toes down towards the ground and reach it back into the initial position. Okay, it's not the angle in my knee that's changing. I'm not doing this. I'm reaching the whole shape away. And then think of bringing the thigh bone and sinking it back into the socket. Good. Breathe here. <sighs> really important to keep your abs engaged, to keep the hips from dancing around or moving around. <sighs> Breathe. Again, this is a very foundational move that's going to help you strengthen your abdominals for more complex ab exercises. So really get used to this, getting used to the hips staying still. Good. Let's move on to the other side. Drop the left foot, reach the right foot off the floor, and let's go. Dip and reach. I'm going to go ahead and straighten this leg just so that you can see the movement. Abs stay engaged the whole time. I like to exhale when my legs are being pulled back or my leg is being pulled back to just to find that power to pull the leg back. So notice what helps you. Try both out, maybe exhale on the way up, exhale on the way down. There's no strict rule about the breath. It's really what helps you. <sighs> Good. Let's do one more. Very good, and release. Feel it in those thighs, feel it in the abs. Good, interlace your fingers. Bring your hands behind the head, and let's keep the elbows nice and wide throughout this. So this is the Pilates curl up, like a little crunch here. You're going to mobilize the thoracic spine again, okay? So think of the upper spine moving here. Inhale, nice and deep. Exhale, belly button in, lower back comes a little closer to the floor, ribs in, and let your exhalation help you lift your shoulders. So your shoulders and your head lift up as a result of your exhale. Inhale down. Exhale, lift. <sighs> Elbows stay wide. Head stays heavy in the hands. I'm not pulling on my neck. Chin stays away from the chest. Inhale, lower. <sighs> Exhale. <sighs> Engage your abs. Really, really important to do this right. <sighs> Think of that corset. Now let's use our eyes to our advantage as well. 
if you look up towards the ceiling and try to do this, and then look forward and try to do this, notice the difference. You'll feel blocked when you're looking up. You'll feel this comes a little more easily when you look forward because our brain sends messages to certain muscles depending on where we're looking. And when we're looking forward, these muscles that push us forward are being primed. So let's use this, what we call ocular motor reflexes, to our advantage. Last one. Can we stay lifted now? I know you can stay lifted. <laughs> Breathe. Hold the crunch. Draw the ribs in. Belly button in. For three. For two. For one. And slowly release. <sighs> Good. Give yourself a little break here. And we're going to do uh, an exercise now for our inner thighs. Last one for this workout. So I'm going to ask you to stay in the same position. I'm just shifting a little bit so that you can see me. Keep your arms by the side, nice and relaxed. This is for our inner thighs, like I said. So we're going to turn the toes out, heels in. Okay, and now keeping our abs engaged, we're going to open up the legs nice and wide and then cross. Open, cross the other leg up. So keep switching. One leg comes forward and then the other. Once you get this rhythm, if you want, you can add some foot choreography where you point on the way down, flex on the way up, point on the way down, Flex on the way up. This is optional. If this is too much for you, just stay with the leg movements. Or you can simply point and cross. If you want, you can flex and cross. But make sure your heels stay in and your toes out. That's really going to help you get that burn in your inner thighs. You pick your level. Keep breathing through it. Go a little quicker once you've got that rhythm. The wider you open your legs, the more efforts it takes to bring the legs together. <sighs> Good. Three, two, one. Last one. Very good. Slowly release, hug your knees. And whenever you're ready, slowly drop the knees all the way to the right. Take your time, no rush here. Lift yourself up and come back into a sitting position. Good. Let's take a moment here to sit nice and straight. Take a moment to notice how you feel in the physical body, in the mental body, in the breath. You're definitely stronger than when you started this workout. Give yourself some credit for showing up, for completing this workout, for taking some time out for your body, for your breath, for your mind. <sighs> Feel good about your body. Feel good about all that it was able to do. If your eyes are closed, slowly bring them to open. And I invite you to give yourself a little clap or give yourself a tight hug for completing this workout. Thank you very much for following along. I'll see you again very soon. Take care.